So Tyron Alpha is a platform that they they give great research. Um, and so they're just showing the the daily return spread between the equal weighted S, uh, SPX and the SPX. Mm -hmm. um, and so these are these periods here, the, the dot com, uh, GFC, uh, COVID, and then now we're headed. It, it looks like this move that we've had over the last couple of weeks is um, it, it implies statistical significance. Um, like I said, it, we could still be before a blow off top. It, this, this is there's not certainly not enough data in order to uh, uh, to say anything other than there is a significant amount of volatility. And I thought it was interesting because just looking at the um, just looking at the charts, like fine, I saw you know red candles. I wasn't seeing. I didn't think it was such a, a big deal for the stocks I was looking at, but I didn't realize it was happening across so many of the of the assets that they were all moving in um, in these significant ways. That the larger weighted ones were coming down, and that the smaller cap ones and um, were were rising significantly, which is an indication for which tells you something is happening. Mm -hmm. uh, so I thought thought that was pretty fun. I think one thing that I have been paying attention to is the concentration risk of the top participants in the market, which I think is, you know, this is another indication of that, right? Like the, the mag seven has sort of expanded into the mag set, the mag 15, and we're sort of ignoring what's happening with 485 other companies. Um, the, if you look at the, the tweet that I just sent you, there's a really good, um, side-by-side -side graph of overall earnings of the S and P, uh, 500 relative to the current market cap. And I think that this is a good, um, another good ratio to consider uh, in terms of how frothy markets can become, where we're basically just writing um, a sense of future earnings from a new wave of activity, right? And the, in this case, the the wave of activity is the impact that AI has on many of these businesses. The largest market cap businesses are clearly impacted by um, a sense of forward guidance from the profitability that will come from AI, Microsoft being one of them and their ownership in, in open AI, and obviously NVIDIA being one of the biggest market cap gainers of the year. Um, but the, the problem is, is that underneath all of that, what's sort of boiling under the surface is this weak earnings improvement. You know, the quarter two earnings that came back from the average S&P uh, component was really just kind of a, a reversion to where it was before. And forward guidance is not that promising. Um, so I think if earnings continue to show up disappointing, we we won't just see uh, a a top from some of these large market cap participants. We'll also start to see some uh, some declines in price amongst the other constituents, which are, are going to make up a big reason why the price could reverse. So I'm a little I'm keeping my eye open to that. Let's put it that way, <laughs> and paying attention to where I think that might be, uh, but. I, I think that the big thing that people aren't considering right now is just how expensive AI is and how difficult it's going to be at some point for these companies to get a return on their investment. The, the amount of capital expenditures that are going into data warehouses, graphics cards, you know, uh, infrastructure, development teams, uh, modeling, statistic, uh, uh, stats majors, like all of the human capital, all of the the, the capital expenditures on uh, the equipment and hardware required to run all of this stuff is somewhere between 600 and $800 billion spent so far this year. And to get that back is going to require an enormous amount of return, which means we all have to keep playing this game of like using AI as much as possible. But where is that revenue going to come from? At some point, like everybody's going to have to pay for AI in some way. To me, it's uh, I'm optimistic because it's when you get these constraints you know, there's this great opportunity, and then you have the constraints. It's, it's sort of like how um, the 140 characters on Twitter back in the day was the thing that made Twitter popular. Like it's it's what uh, set it apart from every other social media platform um, because you had to think in a different way. Even now, we have this culture. Like there's a there's a vernacular that's used on on Twitter. There's a um, emojis are used in order to convey convey certain ideas and it's, it's changed the way that um gen z and gen alpha um or even millennials uh, speak uh, all that to say that the the constraint of it that there's this clear to me i mean absolutely clear benefit to continuing the ai development and the integration of these ai systems um 
throughout wherever they, they uh, any field that you can. And this wall, the ceiling of uh, the, the the capital needed in order to to invest inside of it. And I go, okay. The, the the mon the people with money the uh, the big money players i don't think they're going to let a s silly thing like earnings get in the way of <laughs> the power and ability that these things will be able to to generate no, no question especially since they'll they'll keep throwing money at it but that doesn't mean the price will be uh, reflective of of those future returns forever right at some point investors are going to be expecting a return on that on that capital expenditure I guess it seems to me that if the if the the dream comes true um, with the convergence of uh, AI with robotics, that the amount of productivity that can then be suddenly unleashed because of these un unforeseen um, uh, convergences could be so unbelievably massive that it could generate returns the likes of which we have never seen before, and then Absolutely. that's. And that's the thing that would be moving the price. And who cares how long, you know, the Tesla story, who cares how long the earnings are negative if the, the promise can then be fulfilled. And then you get this, this location between what, maybe the company could be have no earnings for 20 years. And people just go, well, doesn't matter. I mean, I'm not going to miss Amazon this time. I'm not going to miss the, uh, I could have bought Amazon at $6. I'm not going to miss that again. Yeah. I don't know. I've learned not to overestimate investor confidence. Like Amazon's one of the most successful stories in the world, but there was a long period of time there from the early 2000s up to 2010, where Amazon posted no profits for years because they had a strategy of reinvesting in the company. And ultimately net earnings were approximated zero for quarter after quarter after quarter after quarter. And the people that were diehard Amazon fans and totally believed in Jeff Bezos were the ones that stuck around, stuck around, but they received some harsh criticism on those earnings calls every quarter that they didn't post earnings, uh, and they they explained how they were investing in their in their models and that all of this would eventually show up. Well, it eventually did, and it ended up being a famously profitable business and still is to this day. But that took a lot of confidence in, for investors to keep hanging on and keep investing in Amazon for a long time, and I think their performance suffered for for many many years. So, you know, if you can forecast the future of AI's revenue potential in a 20 year horizon, well, sir, sign me up. I'll put my money where, where in your hedge fund because <laughs> I just don't know that, you know, the rest of the market has that kind of confidence. <laughs> Fair enough.